from Wyoming. Thank you, Madam President. I ask unanimous consent that the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. Th thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I come to the floor today to speak about unleashing American energy. Earlier this month, we saw the highest price ever for a gallon of gasoline in the United States. Inflation is over a high of 40 years. Energy costs are driving the cost of everything else, and there appears to be no end in sight. Joe Biden cannot hide from the fact that he is the president of high prices. Meanwhile, in Europe, Vladimir Putin continues his onslaught. The Russian killing machine continues its assault on innocent people. Thousands of civilians have been killed. This includes hundreds of children. Vladimir Putin's war crimes are all paid for with Russian energy. Energy accounts for nearly half of Putin's budget. Energy is the only successful industry in the Russian economy. If you wanted to fund Vladimir Putin, you have to drain his tank. You have to defund him on energy. So what have we seen from the President of the United States? Well, Joe Biden spent all last year acting like Vladimir Putin was his Secretary of the Energy. Joe Biden played right along. Putin wanted it. Biden did it. Followed the Secretary of Energy. Biden decided against sanctions on Putin's Nord Stream 2 pipeline. People in this body, both sides of the aisle, said, Mr. President, sanction the pipeline. Don't allow it. Putin said, I want it. Biden gave it. Actually, Joe Biden actually lobbied this body, the United States Senate, to not do what we knew was the right thing to do in terms of sanctioning Vladimir Putin in the pipeline. Biden caved to Putin. Biden also caved to Putin by extending our nuclear arms reduction treaty without any conditions. He essentially gave Vladimir Putin exactly what he wanted, a permission slip to build up the military. Even after the invasion, two weeks in, Joe Biden was still fine with buying Russian oil. It took a bipartisan mem members of the House and the Senate to stop it. He didn't ban Russian oil because of the war. It was because of this bipartisan effort in Congress we finally forced his hand. Democrats in Congress were willing to stand up to the President of the United States and they say where they were willing to join the Republicans in overriding the President on this very matter. Joe Biden dragged his feet, so a bipartisan group in Congress had to drag Joe Biden. Every member of this body should remember what President Zelensky had to say to us. He said if there had been sanctions, meaning in January, he said there would not have been a war. In January, I came to this floor and I said history would not be kind to those who ran interference for Vladimir Putin. It's even more true today. History will not be kind to those who stood by as Vladimir Putin planned, prepared, and paid for the invasion. At every step in this crisis, Congress has had to take the lead. The President had to be pulled along. Congress had to drag Joe Biden into banning seven Russian banks from the SWIFT payment system. Congress had to drag Joe Biden into revoking Russia's trade status. Congress had to drag Joe Biden into sending lethal aid to Ukraine. Two-thirds of this aid still hasn't been delivered. Congress signed a check for $3 billion in weapons. So far, it looks like Joe Biden has provided to Ukraine about $800 million. So where are the weapons? Where are the weapons right now? There's no time to waste. Innocent people are being murdered. So much of this, Joe Biden has been not just a day late, but billions of dollars short. And he's leading from far, far behind. But Joe Biden seems to be proud of himself. He went to Europe last week, bragged about the sanctions on Russia. Well, there's still a lot of work to do. 
I'm here in the Senate floor to tell you that we have more work to do in terms of dragging Joe Biden along. On Friday, Joe Biden announced an energy agreement with the European Union. The White House listed 14 things that they would do. Well, what was missing from that list? Well, I'll tell you. The one thing that would actually work. Missing from the list of 14 was the thing that would actually work, which is increasing the production of American oil and gas. Under the agreement, Europe will buy an additional 15 billion cubic meters of natural gas each year. Now, that's about 10 percent of what they currently buy from Russia. So where's it going to come from? It's a legitimate question. They don't know. On Friday, on Friday a Biden official said this said, we can't speak to exactly where the natural gas is coming from. The White House also said that the United States will, quote, maintain its regulatory environment. In other words, no change to current policy. The war on American energy will continue. And if you took a look at the budget that came out yesterday, there are 36 new taxes proposed, 11 of which are going to drive up the cost of American energy. At a time with the highest gas prices ever, 40 percent inflation, the Biden budget says we need to put more tax on the production of energy in this country. We need to produce more energy. We need it. We'll use it. Europe needs it. We promised it to them. Joe Biden's regulators want to keep it in the ground. Now, Secretary Granholm waited until last week to approve two pending applications for liquefied natural gas exports. Could have approved them last year, didn't. Waited till two weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine to finally approve two of six permits. Took weeks of bloodshed. There's still, still four more applications waiting on her desk. Oh, they've been sitting there for well over a year. Time to wake up and approve the applications. Europe has woken up. They're wide awake from their addiction and reliance on their enemies for their energy. Joe Biden is still sleepwalking. Now, Russia is still exporting energy all around the world. We put sanctions in place, but this is what the Washington Post had to say. They called the energy exports continuing today from Russia the loophole that keeps Russia, Russia's economy alive. China is stocking up on Russian oil at a discount. None of Joe Biden's sanctions do a thing to stop China, not a one. China can continue to prop up the Russian war machine. As Senator Toomey has said, we need secondary sanctions to stop the flow of cash to the Kremlin. Joe Biden's banking sections explicitly avoid hitting Russian energy. It is the key to this funding, five to seven billion dollars a week for the killing machine from exporting Russian energy. The banking sanctions don't even go into effect until June 24th. It's still March, April, May, June 24th. The war may be over by then, but in the meantime, thousands of people could die. Oh, and the president's sanctions do not include Russian uranium. They should, but they don't. As a result, our nation, America, remains dependent on Vladimir Putin for one of the most important elements on Earth. If you want to defund Putin's invasion, it's time to finish the job with banning of imports from Russia to the United States, and we must ban uranium. We need to do it now. Now, earlier this month, I've introduced legislation to do just that. Now, I'm grateful that Senator Lummis and Senator Marshall and Senator Kramer have added their strong support. Here in America, we have vast uranium supplies, and it's especially true in my home state of Wyoming. There is no reason at all that America should be buying uranium from Vladimir Putin and Russia. Now, Joe Biden is also helping sell Russian uranium in other countries. 
Because right now, Joe Biden is pushing our nation into a deal with Iran that was negotiated by Russia. Yes, you heard me right. Negotiated by Russia. Not negotiated by the Americans. Not negotiated by us. No, we let Vladimir Putin negotiate with Iran on a nuclear deal. A deal with Iran would mean billions of dollars for Russia. don't believe it? It's true. It's a Russia state-controlled nuclear energy company would get about $10 billion out of the deal. More bullets, more bombs, more bloodshed paid for by Joe Biden's Iranian deal. When it comes to Iran and Russia, no deal is a good deal. Whether it's uranium, whether it's natural gas, the solution for Russian energy is American energy. We have it. We have it in abundance. This administration will not let us get it out of the ground. Today, we are still producing 1.3 fewer, million fewer barrels of oil than we were prior to the pandemic. The administration still is sitting on 4,600 drilling permits. Joe Biden still hasn't had a single lease sale on federal lands for oil and gas. And just yesterday, Joe Biden proposed a $43 billion tax increase on American energy. So who pays these taxes? Clearly, the hardworking families of this country in the form of higher prices. This is the last thing the country needs now at a time of 40-year high inflation and the highest gas prices ever. Now, energy security is worth a lot more than climate zealotry our friends in Europe who are held hostage by Vladimir Putin will tell you that today. We are much better off as a nation selling energy to our friends than being forced to buy it from our enemies. What President Biden and the Democrats don't seem to understand is this. Energy security is national security. For ourselves, for our allies, we need more American energy, and we need it now. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor. Suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk, call the roll.